Hello, it's me again, and keeping with our skewed philosophy or skewed techniques, we're going to be looking at the skewed diamond. Now understand, my purpose of the skewed series is not just to do tutorials and show how to do it, but I wanted to take the opportunity to go through with simple puzzles, these simple skews, how to go through... Um, uh, how to form algorithms and commutators, things like that. So I thought I'd maybe apply it to a diamond. Now we've not done diamonds before. We've not done the octahedrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight sides. So this would be a good opportunity to sort of introduce that aspect in conjunction with a skew. Why is it a skew? Well, it's a skew because when I turn it, it bisects it straight through the middle. So the first thing I do when approached with a new puzzle like this is try to correlate it with other puzzles. And when I first got that, I thought, well, maybe it's just like a two by two. It splits down this, uh, it's got two basic faces that are turning, so maybe it's like that, but it really isn't. It's truly a skew, uh, and I, I have to apply different types of algorithms. Uh, for that. So the next step is to see how we can move these things around. Could I move it just like I did with the um, um, with the other skews, uh, like the skew, um, um, the the kite skews and the uh, rhombic dodecahedron skews, that kind of thing. But really, the octahedron is its own shape. So what I'm going to do is to generate an algorithm, to generate a commutator. I'm going to look at the limited motions that I get with this and start doing repeated series and see how it affects the different puzzles, uh, see how it affects the different sides. To identify the different sides, we have what I'll call corners. We'll call all these corners. And I don't know what to call these. Are they middles? Maybe. I think they're more like edges because what edges do is they combine two faces. And that's what seems to be happening here and here. I'm going to call these edges corners combine three faces. And I'm going to define, say, this as a face. So that's going to be um, a face over here. So is there a commutator that I can do, or an algorithm, rather, that can make these fly around? Well, to generate that, I know that I can, I can do a crisscross type of scenario where I'm coming down, down. And the notation that I'm going to use, and, and I don't really want to get too involved in notations, is again, I'm going to define this as like a right and this as a left. And this will be right down and left down. That's all I'm really going to be doing in terms of identifying that. So let's see what happens. If I do a crisscross pattern down and down, I know what I'm going to be doing is intersecting these corners here. So anytime you develop a, uh, an algorithm or a commutator and you have intersecting sides or corners, they're going to expect them to be rotated around. In addition, the edges are intersecting as well. So I'm going to see exactly what happens when I do a simple down, down, up, up algorithm and see how it affects things. And this will affect my solve. So this coming down here, we'll do start off with left, moving it in a counterclockwise rotation. I'm sorry, right in the counterclockwise rotation. Down, down, up, up. Now let's see what happened. Interesting is that this side here, above what we we're doing, did not get touched at all. I've got all of these edges in place in the center. But the yellow center went up to here, and I guess this was the blue center went here. So these two flip-flopped, and, and uh, these appear to stay the same, the white and the green, and the yellow went here, green went here, so these two flip-flopped. But also, in addition, these guys moved around, and that's what I'm going to be more concerned with. These guys didn't change. The yellow one went over here. The green, um, the yeah, uh, sorry, <laughs> the orange one went over here. The yellow one went over here, and the green one went over here. So now I know that doing that down, down, up, up will cause these. And I started off with a counterclockwise rotation on the right side, makes it rotate clockwise. So that's going to be useful to me in terms of the solve. The other thing that I notice is rotation. So I'm going to say that it moves, it switches from here to here, here to here. But in terms of rotation, this orange one rotated 180 degrees. This should be facing down. The, edges, uh, the edge that faces up, or the side that faces up, is, is purple. So this purple now face down. So when I grabbed it here, this side, this edge, sorry, this corner moved here and rotated. How about this one? Well, this one moved here, but didn't rotate. It stayed exactly the same. Because you see the blue is up. This one came here and also rotated. So it appeared that both sides that I grabbed ended up rotating. The side that I didn't grab first didn't rotate. 
didn't, you know, turn. So my prediction when I do this same algorithm again is this will move over here, but the blue will be up since I'm starting it over here. This will come over here, but the blue will be down. So it'll be rotated wrong. And this will shift over here without any rotation and the yellow will be up. So what's gonna happen with the next one is this will be um, incorrectly rotated this will be incorrectly rotated, and this will be correctly rotated by the end of it. So let's see if it works. Down, down, up, up, and lo and behold, that's what happened. The yellow one just shifted. The one that was here, which was rotated up, rotated down wrong, and the one that was here that was rotated down, rotated up here. So it would appear that two things happen when I apply the algorithm, you have a switching of the side in that clockwise rotation if I start off with a counterclockwise right um, down rotation, but these also flipped 180 degrees. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using that. So my prediction is the next thing that'll happen if I grab it here, this will shift here and rotate in the correct position. This will come here, the yellow one, and rotate in the correct position, and this will just shift already in the right position. Down, down, up, up, and that's what happened. So everything got rotated back. So now I know what I need to do. The centers got messed up, but that's okay. That's not really what we're concentrating on at the, um, at the moment. Although with any repeat, my suspicion is if, uh, that I rotate it around again, it's gonna be three, one, two, three, and this will rotate one, two, three, and the other will be back. So my suspicion is that if I rotate it like this, that'll rotate right back. But we'll take this opportunity to experiment the other way. What if I rotate it the other way? Well, I'm gonna generate a prediction. If I go this way, um, starting off clockwise, I'm gonna rotate things counterclockwise, and because I'm grabbing it from this end, this will come over here, rotated, you know, flipped wrong. This will come over here, flipped wrong, and this will just shift over here, flipped right. So let's, let's see what happens. Down. Let me get my perspective here. Down, down, up, up. Aha, and that's what happened. This just shifted here, the blue's down. Um, this went over here, as you can see with the orange, and this one over here. So I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around. Down, down, up. Up, and one more time. Down, down, up. Up. Okay, so we've generated an algorithm that can cause a predictable movement of these guys while keeping the bottom one the same. So that's all fine and well, but what about these? Is there a way to isolate the movement here? I can move these, which will screw these up to no end, but am I able to isolate the movement over here of these edges? Well, when looking at the geometry of this, this is kind of starting to resemble what might we might see with a cube. So if I were to define this as a bottom, this is a top, so we can say that this is a um, D, this is U, and perhaps this is R, and this is L, and maybe this is B over here, but we uh, back over here, then I do have an algorithm that's known to switch edges. And that algorithm, if I can borrow the cube here for a second, to switch these edges, I just go the Go to the R, U, R, I, U, R, 2, U, R, I. And that rotates these edges around. We held this um, constant, but these are these rotated around. With the Megaminx, it was the same thing, only it was R, U, R, I, U, R, 3, U, I just did two, R, I. And uh, that, rotated, that rotated that around as well. So, got these back in, I'll have to put that back in later. So maybe I can do a form of that, moving edges around by doing a similar RU. But instead of doing RU, RIU, R2U, I'm just gonna do RU, RIU, R, um, U, RI. So, so basically, instead of moving it twice like a cube, or three times like a Megaminx, because of the triangular geometry, I just do it once. So let's see what happens. This being the bottom, I'll go, R, U, R, I, U, R, one U instead of two, R, I, and then U. And uh, yeah, we moved some edges around. It wasn't the top edges as I thought might happen. It's actually the edges around which I moved my R. 
I rotated the edges around my R. What was green is now here, white is now here, and purple is now here. And I didn't touch my corners. So using that concept of switching um, edges around, I'm actually able to move these around. So I'm going to generate a prediction. With the same algorithm, I predict the white is going to move up to here, and everything is going to rotate around. So R, U, R, I, U, R, just one U, R, I, and then U, there's the white. One more should bring it back. R, U, R, I, U, R, U, R, I, U. Okay. So now that we've defined the motions, generated algorithms, we can now use this in order to move these things around um, from a scrambled state. Let's see if it works. Scramble if you got them. Okay, so the first step is we're going to try to get a side, and that shouldn't be too much more difficult than what we do with the Rubik's Cube. So we have red over here. This is the wrong red, so I'm going to put the right one in because these corners don't match. So I'm just going to put them in just by positioning. This is all very intuitive. This is correct here. Here's the red here. So it's not too different from how you do it with a Rubik's Cube. Move this around, bring it up. So we have a first side here. I don't include the ed these edges in that, just what's facing me over here, and that these corners line up. So now this is turned upside down. This will be my bottom side, basically. So now we're going to try to orient these corners using the algorithms that we, uh, that we figured out. So here's the green, let's move that over here. So this is correct. All these should be correct based on their geometry. Here's the blue, it belongs down here. Here's the yellow, it belongs down here. So this is oriented correct, and these are not. So what I want to do is I want to make it to where I can orient these correct. So if I were to move it, if I grab it over here and move right down, I'm going to move it in a clockwise rotation. Since this is right, and I'm going to hold it here, this is going to rotate. Since this is rotated correct, it's going to rotate wrong. This here is rotated wrong, so this is going to slide into here, rotated also wrong. This, since it's rotated incorrectly right now, is going to come over here and rotate correctly. So what's going to happen is that after the turn, this will be incorrect, this will be incorrect, this will be correct. So I'll have two that are incorrect here and this correct, and maybe I can move it back the other way. So here's what I mean by that. I'm going to do the rotation down, down, up, up. So sure enough, this got rotated here, but it got rotated incorrect. This slid over here, still incorrect, and this moved over here, but rotated correct. I know that because orange is facing up, orange is opposite red, so I know this is correct. So I'm going to shift it over here and do the same algorithm now, but I'm going to go on the left side. The left side should make us rotate counterclockwise, and these two, which are rotated wrong, should rotate right. This will slide the other way and be rotated right. So we're going to go down, down, up, up, and sure enough, that's what happened. So basically, you know, there's probably a hundred different scenarios and different um, algorithms, but the strategy that I used is I lined up the one that was correct, and these are all going to be in but incorrect, and I just rotated it this way so that this got flipped incorrect, one of them, um, this slid incorrect, and this got rotated correct, turned it over here, did the same thing so it can slide back right. Um, all right, now the next step is these guys. So I know an algorithm by using a bottom side and using an R, and the R encompasses this, well, I don't want it to encompass that over there. So I'm going to find an R that encompasses all the edges that are out. Here, here, and here, if I move this. So I know if I, if I hold this as the down one, this is the up one, if I do that algorithm, this orange will flip here, this yellow will flip here, this blue will flip here. So let's give it a try. Shall we? R, U, R, I, U. R, U, R, I, U, and yep, lo and behold, these are now in. Now I got these that are out, so let's find an R move that'll encompass all the ones that are out, which is these guys. So I'm going to hold it over here, this white will flip here, this blue will flip here, green will flip here. 
So using that algorithm, which is just a variation of the um, edge rotational one that we did with this guy, that's going to be R U R I U R U R I U, and we're done. We did it. So that's another example of generating a novel algorithm to figure out the motions and rotations of individual components and apply it to a solve. So, hope that was helpful. Give it a try with other puzzles.